Now, that sounds nothing like Bible prophecy and eschatology the way we understand it. But that's their prophecy for the future. But they say it wasn't really Jesus that died on the cross. So I want to ask you this question. How important is it in our faith that we believe Jesus died on a cross? That is the central focus of our faith. The old rugged cross. Jesus died on the cross. Paul said, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross is central to all of time and eternity. And it's also central to the Christian faith. And to deny that and say Jesus didn't really die there is to cut the legs from under Christianity. That's how simple it is. Let me close by saying this. Psalm 119, I read it just a while ago at the beginning of this sermon. In Psalm 119 it says, Thy word is forever settled in heaven. That word settled means it's fixed or established. God has established his word once and for all. And out of all the holy books, like the Koran, that come and go, the Book of Mormon, the New World Translation of Jehovah's Witnesses, it does not change the fact that God's Word is settled. It is established. It is fixed. There's no variation. There's no doubtfulness in the Word of God. There's no shaking it. There's no rattling it. Forever thy Word is settled in heaven. I want to ask you this morning, do you believe in the Bible? Are you living by its principles and precepts? What about your personal relationships, in your family life, in your financial life? Are you living by the principles and precepts of God's Word? And then one of the things the Bible teaches very clearly is this, that all humankind is lost in sin, and we need a Savior. And if you've never prayed to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, I want you to do that today. And all you have to do is simply pray a prayer something like this, Dear God, I know that I've sinned. That's what your Bible says. And I know that you so love me, you did send your only begotten Son. You sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. And when Jesus died on the cross, he took my place and he took my punishment. And I want to receive and embrace Jesus as my Lord and Savior this very morning on August the 8th, 2010. I received Jesus into my heart and into my life. And if you pray that prayer, you can come down front in just a moment. We'll have our time of invitation. We'll share with you, pray with you, give you some good literature. Or you can simply check the box where it says, my next step today is. My next step, my decision today. And I've received Jesus Christ. Just check that. And if we see that checked on your communication card, we'll call you within the next 24 to 48 hours. We'll get in touch with you because we want to talk to you and pray with you and help you and encourage you. That's an all-important decision. And we welcome you to the family of God if you pray that prayer. Would you stand with me? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you so much that we have the true word of God. Lord, we know there are many other holy books so-called out there. But Lord, we can rest assured there's so many discrepancies and so many problems with these books. And your word stands true forever, O oh God. Your word is settled and established in heaven. Help us to treat this book with respect and dignity, to really serve the Lord who wrote this book, the Bible, and to honor him by honoring his word. Father, bless this altar call now and just use it simply for your glory and your praise. In Jesus' name, amen.